Hey guys, this is Kevin. Uh, today we're going to keep talking about the Epson Printhead, and uh, I might help you to figure out some way of uh, unclog them. Uh, I have a video here explaining to you how to unclog the Epson Printhead, and uh, this video is supposed to be part two. So I'm going to link this part one video on the uh, upper right corner. This is a typical component of uh, Epson Printhead. And after this video, you're going to understand what each part is and what they use for. I'm going to just take uh, three printheads. One is the one used for Artesian 1430 or L1800. Then we'll have this one mostly used for WF7720, uh, 3640, 7710. And then we have this uh, typical uh, eco tank printhead. Oh, either a eco tank or super tank, whatever you call it. This L1800 was used for a DTF printer. You can see Epson used a screw to give you an option to open this printhead. So we're going to remove all screw, three screws. Epson usually have these uh, protective uh, uh, brackets uh, that's holding uh, a gold uh, nozzle place. It looks like one piece, but however, after you remove it, you're going to find that this is just a steel brackets. You can see dry the DTF ink here. You can see that. Uh, now we're going to break, uh, break it open and just put your hand up here and just separate them. Uh, don't worry, they have a glue, glue them together. Uh, but uh, you can always add more glues and uh, put it back. Or even if you do not have glue, that's fine. Don't worry about it. The thing is tightened by the screw, and the glue is just something add on to it. And you can see we have a top ink, work, uh, ink <laughs> intake plate. And uh, so the ink is going to come in and uh, go through those tubes. And you can see the white ink here, the white DTF ink. And uh, different brands of ink and different ink, they are different. So I'm going to just test it. What kind of this ink dry to? So you can see this ink dry to a powder. Okay, some be, some ink dry into a rubbery, uh, rubbery uh, substance that's harder to unclog. So this one should be easier. So I take off a needle and uh, just poke inside and uh, checking on the texture and uh, check how how easy to unclog it. You can see if you follow the other YouTube video, just get a syringe and uh, push this in, you're making things worse. You're pushing this thing inside into the printhead <laughs> that's going to permanently clog the printhead. Okay, now I am checking the bottom place. Don't be afraid to, to dig it too deep. Uh, don't worry about it. You won't be able to damage it unless you really, I mean, try really hard. And you can see the color ink is more rubbery. So now I have a good idea. So I'm just kind of uh, massage it and get it out. And uh, underneath is like a soft, like a mud stuff. And that's what I like. So I think that this printing is still salvageable. The black ink, uh, the white ink is powdery and that I can remove most of it. And uh, the uh, the color ink, after I remove this rubber stuff, underneath it just a uh, fresh, fresh ink. And uh, for those of you like to use Q-tip to clean your ear can candles, and uh, you're going to have fun with this. Wow, look at this. This is totally just ink. So I will I only need to unclog the white and the magenta. Cool. You can see the ink dried like that. It's not like you have a, you add some cleaning solution, the whole thing going to dissolve, and uh, you'll be happily after. Uh, but what the cleaning solution is, you soften the structure a little bit, make it uh, manageable and workable. Okay, so we have uh, different kinds of uh, cleaning solutions. If you go to bchtechnology.com and uh, go to accessories, anti-clogging agent. If it's DTF ink, you're going to use this blue one. The blue one is really good at the DTF ink and the pigment ink. 
The red one is good for uh, pigment ink, dye ink, sublimation ink, and it is the maximum strength. And uh, then you have a, a clear, a clear clean solution work for dye and pigment. And you have a green clean solution work for dye, pigment, and sublimation ink. And, uh, and you can see there's some overlap because there are different formulas. When you use the cleaning solution, I don't know wh what brand of ink you're going to use on. And you can see even for the DTF ink, we got two different, two different uh, textures. One is powdery, one is rubber. Uh, so please do not email me say, oh, I have uh, this uh, printer and uh, with this ink in it, which cleaning solution should I use? I think you should use all of them and uh, try them one by one until one of them works. Uh, let me see what's underneath uh, the other white ink. So you have two ink channels. Yeah, this one is more rubbery than the, uh, the, the, than the other white ink channel. So even for the white ink, we have a, uh, they, they draw it differently between those two. You can see here's the powder and the one the other one is the rubber. <laughs> so I'm going to clean as much as I can, then inject some uh, blue uh, cleaning solutions into it. And here we can see three rows of uh, brass uh, contact points. Oh, did I show you the rubber grommets or seal? Uh, we just sandwich between the working tape plates and at the bottom of the print head. And this is the one that uh, prevents the ink leak. So if you do the flushing, you push too hard, ink, ink might flow from there. So I'm going to wrap it up because uh, this, this print head looks like a salvageable. And you can see uh, this, this print head, the 720 print head, it doesn't have that uh, uh, actually, it has, has it, that the steel plate is uh, integrated uh, into the print head, and it doesn't have that uh, uh, that gold plate. Uh, doesn't have the gold uh, nozzle plate. But still, the Epson gave you some gave, gave you option to take it apart, and uh, you just unscrew the screws. And there's no glue, so just uh, open it, and you can see the rubber seal grommets. Uh, ink intake plates and uh, directly you get a uh, PCB board and you can see although the print heads are different but they are designed uh, similarly and this print head is uh, Epson OEM ink which is a mixture of uh, pigment and dye and you can see their texture is very hard and uh, powdery so uh, this one, I'll use the red cleaning solution and the uh, green cleaning solution. Uh, it dried pretty hard, so i probably not going to use the clear cleaning solution. And again, and this time we have two rows of uh, those brass contact points. And also notice the, the ink intake is in the center row, it's in the center of uh, those uh, brass contact points. And look at this. It's hard as rock, so you do not want to push this into the print head, right? Yeah, if you need a cleaning needle, you can go to bchtechnology.com or you go to your local like Joan Fabrics and, uh, and you can show them what you need and uh, they might be able to help you out. And right now you're looking at two different things. The one I'm working on is the uh, ink tube. The ink tube is in the center and go all the way down, get straight down, uh, touch the bottom. And uh, on both sides of the, the tubes, you can see the brass contact points and uh, brass contact points connect to a central driver. Before I show you the, the, the electronic part, and uh, let me talk about those eco tank uh, print heads. Those you can see it doesn't have a screw, and uh, basically absence heat sealed it. So if you want to repair it, you have to buy some like little screw after you're done, and you use the screw to uh, screw them in. 
the other side is the same and uh, you just uh, use a razor blade and remove the top and uh, then and then uh, you can take the printed part you can see a black grommet or a black seal and underneath the seal you got this uh, ink filter it is that that's one improvement apps are making and you can see I already have some uh, uh, kind of fabric on it that's great and now we're going to keep talking what's underneath uh, the electronic con contact points you can see they're all pretty similar so they have uh, contact points on the bo on both sides and uh, uh, on the on the board there are just some capacitors to clean up the signal but uh, nothing fancy and uh, those uh, brass points they are testing points so you can quickly uh, test if a printer is still good or not and also I get a small contact uh, testing points throughout which is really convenient okay let's uh, talk about what's after those uh, contact points connects to the contact points is uh, this little thing and uh, one on each side so there will be two of those and uh, this uh, basically is the CPU of the printhead you can see on top is your 27 pin or 14 pin whatever the pin you goes into the printhead on the bottom is a row of uh, I think uh, 150 or 300 uh, little wires goes to the uh, goes to the nozzle you might wonder how I control 150 uh, little wires you just using like uh, uh, 27 pins or like uh, 28 pins basically you don't make all them hot so you use a matrix system so you have a one line and you make that line hot and uh, then that line lessen to the signal uh, uh, combination from the other pins so this uh, the black thing in the middle uh, controls which pin to fire and uh, those little little tiny tiny hairs or the wires are going to fire on the nozzle uh, you can see if something's wrong here, it's beyond anybody's ability to fix it. And this thing go vertically and uh, contact the bottom nozzle plate. Here's the nozzle plate. Uh, look the middle. The center is the ink channels. And uh, then there are two uh, electronic plates attached to it. Uh, if you use a needle and uh, Basically, you're not messing up anything electronically. You can just touch the bottom of uh, this iron thing. And uh, we're looking at the bottom of the plate. Basically, this is uh, uh, printed upside down. The very outside uh, row is the real nozzle, the ink coming out from here. The inside is that little wire that uh, you just saw. So the wire connect here. And here's the membrane, and uh, this whole thing is black. So the whole row of nozzles is black. Down the bottom, you have a uh, cyan, magenta, yellow, three uh, separate uh, bags and uh, three separate group of nozzles. And you can see if you have a needle and uh, come down, and uh, very less likely, uh, uh, you 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 you're not gonna poke and. Uh, and uh, break the bag. However, if you push too hard, too much ink pressure, and uh, this uh, this film is gonna break. And that's why some people tell me they hear a pop sound. And just want to give you a little bit more time to embrace this uh, technology and admire uh, how Epson does things. And uh, of course, on the other side, to show you off, and uh, Epson have uh, this uh, Nippon uh, Japan 45. I don't know what 45 is. It's just a beautiful uh, piece of work. Anyway, how the wire fires up the nozzle and uh, make a nozzle square ink and check my previous video. I don't want to repeat here. And then on top of, top of the nozzle plate, we have this gold plated plate. And this plate, one is production, another one is the surface uh, tension. And uh, you can see there are two rows of holes. Okay, see it? 
the tiny holes on both sides. I'm putting uh, the the nozzle plate on top of the 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 gold plated uh, plate, and uh, you can see the uh, you can see the, the matches. And here I just like a poke uh, the the plastic bag a little bit and I massage it and uh, just let me let you and uh, just show you it's not that easy to break it but it's not that hard so when you press you have to have some experience see how much uh, ink pressure you're going to add on to it so I just covered every part of uh, absence printhead and I hope you, when you see this picture you can recognize all the parts Okay, I hope you enjoy this video. Visit us at www.bchtechnology.com or locally at Greensboro, North Carolina. Cheers.